Welcome to our video on solving proportions. So nice simple topic, solving proportions, and our learning target, 7RP2, I can write and solve a proportion using cross products. So first is some vocabulary. A proportion, and we talked about this a little bit in sixth grade, is an equation saying that two ratios are rates. Think of them as kind of two fractions are equivalent. They're equal to each other. So a proportion is something like this. 6 sixteenths is equal to 9 twenty-fourths. And last year we looked for little things like how could I get from a 6 to a 9? Can I do the same thing to the 16 to get to 24? And some other ways of solving proportions or finding out if they're equivalent. But we've got another trick. If two ratios are equivalent, their cross products are going to be equal. Okay? We're going to use that technique today to solve some proportions. And what that means is basically multiplying the numbers along a diagonal. 6 times 24 is 144. 9 times 16 is 144. These two are equal to each other. They're proportional because their cross products are equal. Basically, all we did is multiply both sides by 16 to get rid of the denominator. We multiply both sides by 24. But the shortcut is, is really just multiplying along your diagonals. If both of those are equal to each other, then we know that they are proportional. So think of it as one half and two fourths. Someone, something we know is equivalent. Two times two is four. One times four is four. Those are equal, so we know that those are proportional. They are equivalent to each other. So now we're going to solve some proportions, meaning we don't know one of the pieces of information, but we need to find it. And we're going to use our cross products to do it. If we can't find a nice, neat way to get to our answer, all we do is multiply along our diagonals. I'm going to do 10 times x. I'm going to do 4 times 9. And those have to be equal to each other in order for it to be proportional. Basically, we just turned it into a simple one-step equation. We have 10x is equal to 36. All we do is solve our equation. They multiplied by 10, so I divide both sides by 10, and I get x is equal to, in this case, 3.6. Okay, these are going to be different from 6th grade. You're not going to get nice, neat whole numbers every time. We're going to get some fractions. We're going to get some decimals in there, and that's okay. But we do our cross products. That sets up our simple one-step equation, and then we go ahead and solve it. If you think you know what you're doing, try it on the next one. Hit pause. If not, follow along as I try it. So this time, same thing. Multiply along my diagonals. Find my cross product. So I want to do 21 times 7. Then I multiply along my opposite one. I'm going to do 3 times n. Pull out my trusty calculator. 21 times 7 is 147. 3 times n is, of course, 3n. And then I solve my equation. Divide both sides by 3 to get n by itself. 147 divided by 3 is 49. Yes, I need to see that work and how you solved your one-step equation in order to get your answer. I'm okay if you don't give me this step here, showing me 21 times 7. If you want to go right to 147, that's fine. And instead of 3 times n, if you want to go right to 3n, I'm okay with that. But you got to show the rest of the work in solving that one-step equation. So, now we know the basics, let's put it to use in some word problems. Yes, you need to write down the word problem along with the work. You can't just shortcut it. But notice my note down here. Focus on the units in the problem to help you in setting up the proportions. So this one says, after two hours, the air temperature had ridden seven degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm dealing with hours and degrees, the temperature. Setting up that little ratio off to the side helps me set up the rest of the problem. It says after two hours the air temperature had risen seven degrees, how many degrees would it rise in seven hours? So we start with our initial information, two hours and it rose seven degrees. I said hours on top, so two hours on the top, seven degrees on the bottom. Now I want to set up my second piece and this is where one piece is going to be missing and that's the part we're going to solve for. This one said, how many degrees would it rise in seven hours? So I know seven hours. We said hours is in the numerator, so I'm going to put the seven over here. Meaning we want to know how many degrees. That's my missing piece of information. 
Now, we solve our proportion by using our cross products. So, we multiply along our diagonals. We do our cross products. 2 times x is 2x. Multiply along my other di diagonal. 7 times 7 is 49. And then I divide. They multiply by 2, so I'm going to divide by 2. x is equal to 22. I don't know. That would be 24. Let me clean that up a little bit. Sorry, guys. That would give me 24.5 degrees. Don't forget to put the units back on there when you're all done. But that little cheat sheet off to the side helps make sure we plug the right numbers into the right spots. So let's try another one. Mrs. Baker paid $2.50 for five pounds of bananas. So I'm dealing with money and pounds of bananas. And you can use your abbreviation for pounds if you'd like. $2.50 for five pounds. That's my initial rate. Two fifty over five pounds. Now we set up our other fraction, our other ratio. How much would it cost for eight pounds? So eight pounds, we said pounds is going to go in the denominator, so the eight pounds is going to go over here, meaning I don't know what the cost is going to be. That's what I want to solve for. Now we go ahead and we do our cross products. Eight times 250 is going to be $20. Five times X is 5X, and then we divide. Divide both sides by five. Yes, you got to show all that work in your solving. X is equal to $4 for eight pounds. So my final answer is $4. That's my missing piece to make those two ratios equivalent to each other. All right, if you think you got this one down, go ahead, try it on your own. If, if not, follow along and I'll walk you through this one. But set it up just like we did before. A car can travel 476 miles and 14 gallons of gas. So I'm dealing in miles and gallons. I know it's 476 miles in 14 gallons. They kind of always give us that at the beginning of the problem. They give us that initial rate. But the key is the next part. How many gallons of gas, so it sounds like I don't know the gallons, does this, does this car need to travel 578 miles. So my last piece of information is 578 miles. Miles is in my numerator, so it stays in my numerator. And I want to know how many gallons. So hopefully you're kind of picking up on the pattern here. Multiply along my diagonal. 476 times x is 476 x. 578 times 14. I'm going to need my calculator for that one. And I get 8,092. This is why we use calculators. Now we solve the equation. They multiply by 476, so I'm going to divide both sides by 476. And x is equal to 17 gallons. But you have to put those units back onto your final answer. You can't just give me a 17. I need to know what units are we measuring. In this case, we're missing how many gallons, so it would be 17 gallons. All right, hopefully you got a pretty good feel for it so far. Let's try one last one. This one's a little bit trickier, and that's why I wanted to do one in the video here so you had an example. It said, if the ratio of type O to non-type O donors at a blood drive was 37 to 43. So I'm going to start with, I've got type O. That was my 37. I've got non-type O. These are just different blood types. Okay, you got to match up your blood type when you're donating blood to somebody. We want to know how many donors would be type O out of 300 donors. Okay, well, we know something about type O and non-type O, but 300 donors sounds like that's the total number of people. So we need to add one extra category of total. Well, if there's 37 people that have type O, 43 that have non-type O, that gives us a total of 80 people in total. So we had to go find that extra piece of information. Now we're going to use it to solve the problem. It said, 
how many donors would be type O out of 300 donors? So in this problem, I want type O versus the total. Well, I look back at my ratio. 37 for type O, 80 for the total. So that's my initial information. And then it says how many would be type O, so I don't know the type O, out of 300 donors. 300 is my total, so it goes on the bottom. Okay, so this one took a little bit of work because we couldn't just use the two initial pieces. We had to go find that third piece. Okay, so this one just required some careful reading. And then we do our multiplication. 80 times x is 80x. 37 times 300 is 1,110. And then we solve. Divide both sides by 80. And we get 138.75. But since we're talking about how many donors we would need, and these are actual people donating blood, we would have to round this off to be 139 that had type O. In this case, we needed a whole number, so we'd have to round to our nearest whole number and get a total of 139 that would be type O. Okay?